Hey guys, it's Sarah. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm a little bit sad because I'm like pre-filming all of these intros and I'm like, I haven't gotten to film any intro in front of my super cute Halloween display because it's not up yet. Kind of hate that. <laughs> but I did want to be sure to get these videos out to you guys early because as much as they are Halloween inspired, they can also be used for any time of year, including Christmas gift ideas, things like that. So I just kind of wanted to put it on your guys' radar early on so that you can prepare. <laughs> so today's video, as you saw in the title, is going to be doing three different DIYs using one fabric. So one type of fabric, three DIYs, and the catch is that I did not make Mickey ears. You heard me right. I bought super cute fabric and I did not make Mickey ears. <laughs> Instead of making Mickey ears, I came up with three separate crafts for this fabric, and my biggest reason for doing this type of video is because I myself go to the fabric store and I am just in love with the Disney fabrics that have come, especially to Joann's. That's like the best fabric store in my area, and they do sell online, but you have to buy like two yards at a time, which kind of stinks when you're not making a really big project. One of these projects does require more fabric, so you could definitely buy online for that one. But I wanted to challenge myself to come up with different ways of using fabric other than just making Mickey ears. So if you are at all interested in this video, then just keep watching. So to start off, I wanna show you the fabric that I chose to work with, which is this beautiful Hocus Pocus fabric that I picked up from Joann's. They have a ton of Hocus Pocus fabric, um, but this one was my personal favorite. I really liked the light lavender background. Our first project is gonna be making a small planter box for display using our fabric and Dollar Tree products. So this first project is a no-sew project. You're gonna need one of these little wooden boxes. I get them from Dollar Tree. They're actually a drawer, and I'm only using the insert of the drawer, so there is like a case it goes into, if that makes sense. Um, but any little wooden box would do. Um, and then you're going to cut your fabric and we're essentially going to be gluing it onto this box so that it's no longer a wooden box, but rather it's Hocus Pocus. So I started just by cutting a larger than needed piece, um, and then I am focusing on trying to center, not center, but like get it placed right where the words aren't getting cut off, but I'm also getting all of the witch that I'm trying to show. So I'm starting with Winifred. I wanted to make sure that she is the center. Now I will point out to you guys, yes, there's a little butterfly cut out on the back of the box. I just didn't care because you're not gonna see that portion of it once this is all done, cause it's the back. <laughs> but if that bothers you, you could always cover the back up with fabric as well. We're gonna be putting flowers inside of this so you definitely won't see it. After I put my fabric on top of my box, I just used my invisible ink marker or my disappearing ink marker um, to mark the lines so that I knew kind of where to cut to trim down my fabric. And then now I'm just trimming it and I'm going to make sure that I check the sizing again just by placing it down. I do have the edges hanging over just a smidge because I did find this was a little bit easier to do if the fabric was a teeny bit big as opposed to too small. For this project, I chose to use matte Mod Podge. I just thought that it would look better on top of the fabric. This paint is dried up on this plate, so I'm just reusing it again. Um, but I just poured a pretty generous amount onto the plate and I'm using just a regular paintbrush just to paint it onto the front of the box. I did get it on the edges as well and then I'm going to place down my fabric and use my finger to smooth it out. You just wanna make sure that you don't have any wrinkles or bumps. If your fabric is super wrinkled, I definitely would suggest ironing it before doing any of this just because that wrinkle will stay if you don't get it out before you start. After you've got it all attached, then you're gonna do a top coat of Mod Podge as well. This is going to seal this fabric really, really well. Um, now for the edges, I'm just using my finger to smooth over the edge into the Mod Podge and then cutting off any furry strings or loose strands of thread. Um, you wanna be pretty generous with the top coat of Mod Podge because it's going to smooth this down to make it seem like this really is how the box came as opposed to it's a piece of fabric not well glued down onto the box. Um, so I'm just taking my time, really using my finger to smooth out the Mod Podge and kind of spread it all around. That's what Winifred's side looks like. And then I'm gonna move on to the other two sisters. So next I'm going to go for Mary and I am just going to be cutting this down, same thing that I did with Winifred in order to fit most of the, or the entire phrase and most of Mary on there. Again, using my marker to mark my edges. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this down to size and then repeat all the steps as before. Thank you. 
Now, instead of being impatient like me, I would suggest you let these two sides dry. That way you don't have to put down one of the wet sides on the table in order to add the third witch. I just was in a hurry to get this project done. So I went ahead and flipped it over and started on Sarah. Right now I'm just smoothing down the Mod Podge that's kind of excessive. Again, didn't really think this through, put down the Mary side onto the table. It didn't really mess anything up, but it did provide challenges. Now you see here, I have a wrinkle on this piece of fabric. I realized that and ended up starting over and recutting a new one. So I'm gonna skip ahead. But just go ahead and repeat all of the same steps for the Sarah side. And then if you'd like to cover up the back as well, again, repeat those steps. Now I wanted to show you guys a couple options of what you could put inside this box. I have these little witches brooms from Dollar Tree. They do come in a three pack from Dollar Tree. Um, and I like to take off the ribbons it comes with and add ribbons that remind me of the sisters. So I did red for Mary, green for Winnie, and pink for Sarah. And those are just satin ribbons that I got from Dollar Tree. Um, I do use a, a lighter to burn the edges so that they don't fray. Um, now you could put those in the box. I chose to put those somewhere else in my decor and instead I just decided to make this a little planter. So I took some leftover styrofoam from a previous project and just broke it so that it would fit inside. <laughs> um, and then I am going to be using all of the flowers that I had left over from my Hocus Pocus wreath that I made. Now if you guys missed that video, I will link it. If you're a Hocus Pocus fan, you're going to love this wreath. Um, again, I used a lot of Dollar Tree products. A lot of these flowers are actually from Dollar Tree or from like the dollar spots at or the dollar flower section at Walmart um, so very cost-effective but I like going with the color scheme that reminds me of fall as well as the witches themselves so purple kind of a mauvey pink color green orange red all of those um, but I'm just making a cute little floral arrangement um, I will tell you guys I'm not the best at floral arrangements I just kind of have to mess around with it until I like how it looks um, but the biggest thing for me was making sure that I'm not covering up the witches on the fabric because I loved how these leaves poked out, but I didn't want them to go so far down that we couldn't actually see the design of the fabric. Project number two is definitely a sewing machine required project, but it's definitely beginner friendly, easy to do. Showing you guys how I made this Hocus Pocus apron. So starting off with the skirt portion of your half apron, you are going to want to cut your fabric to 36 by, or sorry, 16 by 36. You want the height of your fabric, the length of your fabric to be 16 inches and the width of your fabric to be 36 inches. So I am working very slowly. I sped this clip up quite a bit just so you guys don't have to sit here and watch me like meticulously cut this fabric. Um, one mistake I definitely made is that you should absolutely iron out all of the wrinkles on your fabric before cutting it. Um, I always, forget to do that and what ends up happening is your fabric is just a little bit off everywhere because once you iron it it's going to make your fabric slightly different um, because now it's laying perfectly flat um, i am using a rotary blade and a cutting mat i would highly suggest picking these up if you're going to be doing a sewing project and you don't already have one just because of time and accuracy um, if i myself had to do this project without a rotary mat um, i don't think that my fabric would have come out straight but i have a problem cutting straight lines so just my advice, um, you can definitely pick them up at Hobby Lobby or Joann's when they're on sale or use a coupon. Um, and then I am using this little clear, uh, kind of like a line marker that my sister gave me. It's very helpful, but you really just need something to give you a straight edge. A meter stick would work. Even just a ruler would work and you could go portion by portion. Um, but again, the measurement is 36 by 16. So next, now that you have your fabric cut, you are going to need to fold over the edges of your skirt so that we can hem it. Um, now I'm starting with the selvage edge, which is this edge that has all of the words and the printing. Like obviously I don't want that to show on the apron. So you can just cut this off if you don't want it to show at all, but being the hem, it didn't really bother me. Um, now again, I'm just using a straight edge to make sure that I have this nice and folded over. I did pin the two corners and then I am going to press this with my iron. So just running over it just to make sure it's got a nice crisp edge before you go in with your sewing machine or if you're hand sewing before you hand stitch it. If you guys are wondering about the exact measurement of the fold, I tried to line it up with about three quarters of an inch on the fold. Um, so if you have a ruler or a measuring tape, it's about a three quarter inch fold the first time as well as when we fold the fabric over in just a moment. And then I go ahead and remove the pins, go over it one more time, and then we will be folding this edge over again. That's why I wasn't worried about the words showing because we're double folding the hemline just to make sure that it holds really nicely. So you'll go ahead and fold that nice pressed edge over one more time. You can pin this down 
or just go over it with the iron if you trust yourself that it's nice and straight. <laughs> I then go ahead and repeat this on the other side of the fabric. Now we're not working on the top and the bottom hem just yet, so only worry about the sides at this moment. Go ahead and pin the edges again, press it down with your iron, fold it over, and iron it again. The goal of this is that your edge is so nicely ironed and flat that when you go to stitch it, it will stay perfectly as is, and you won't have to worry about any bunching on the fabric or weird wrinkles or creases. It also gives your product a, light, a lot better of a finished edge, so that it looks more professionally made. Once you have that all ironed, you really shouldn't need to pin it in place, but if you're nervous about it and pins will make you feel more comfortable, obviously you're more than welcome to add pins as needed. Um, but I am just taking this over to my sewing machine. I am doing a 5 8 inch seam allowance, and then I just lower my presser foot and go ahead and do a straight stitch all the way down. I would highly suggest back stitching when you start as well as when you finish. It just helps to reinforce your seam as well as prevent any likelihood of a stitch popping. And then it should look just like this when you're all done. So after sewing both sides, we're gonna go ahead and move to working on the bottom stitch or the bottom hem line. And it's the exact same process. You're going to fold your fabric over three quarters of an inch press it down with your iron and then fold it over again three quarters of an inch and press it once more. Now something that's a little bit different about doing the bottom is the corners. Now because you've stitched the sides of the apron to create a nice clean hemline, you are probably going to want to really well fold the corner over. I'm going to show you right here and then you are obviously going to want to pin that down before you iron. The key is just to make sure that your corner is very nicely lined up and nothing's poking out, and, you know, making it look less nice. I would focus very heavily on the corners before moving on to the rest of it. And then at the end, I would hit them again with the iron just because it will make your life a lot easier when you get this to the sewing machine. But go ahead and just press down the edge and then you will fold that over and press it again. You want a very straight, very clean line. If anything looks off, take your time. This is one of those things where you just want to do it right the first time and not have to redo it. For the sake of time, I'm not going to show myself stitching the bottom hemline of the skirt. Um, it is the exact same process as the sides. So if you need a reference, just rewind back to that clip. It's the exact same thing. So the top of the hemline is going to be a little bit different than the rest of the skirt. So I'm going to be snipping the edge using peaking shears. These stop the fabric from fraying. Um, and this stitch is going to be different than the rest of what we did on the skirt because this is the portion that's going to obviously attach to the waistband. So um, I did pick these up using a coupon. I would highly suggest waiting for them to go on sale or maybe checking Walmart. Mine are pretty heavy duty industrial. So you could probably find them for a pretty good deal if you search. but that is the edge that you get when you use these scissors. So then we're gonna go ahead and take this over to our machine and go ahead and just do a straight stitch, but you will not be back stitching on this particular stitch because we're going to pull the thread in order to create that puckering look or like the pleated look that a cute waist apron has. So no back stitching this time, just do a single straight stitch as you go. Another important thing is that when you start, you wanna make sure that you have excess thread so that you have something to pull. So we are going to stitch all the way down to the bottom, but when you cut off the fabric that's left over, make sure you leave yourself a little pull string. And again, do not back stitch. So I did pull up a reference for how to do this thing that I'm trying to do, which is pulling this thread in order to create pleats in the fabric. I had not done this in a very long time and needed a little help, um, but I'm sorry my thread is white and my table is white, but as you can see, I'm just pulling my thread, um, not hard enough to tear the thread, just hard enough to where I'm getting that nice pleated shape. And then I'm just kind of moving my fabric around the way that I think that it looks best. Um, so this is very personal preference, but you're gonna get most of the puckering on the side that you're pulling. So you kind of have to work the pleating across the entire apron. And then obviously you're gonna wanna flip it over to the front and just make sure that it looks right from the side that people are going to see. 
So for the waistband itself, I'm gonna be using this really deep plum purple fabric. I just really liked how it complemented my apron. Again, I'm using three contrasting fabrics. You could absolutely do this with a single piece of fabric or use different ones like I did, but you're going to cut this strip into 54 inches by five inches. Um, I believe mine ended up being 53 inches because that's all I had on hand, but um, it still worked. So depending on how long you would like the bow in the back to be when you tie it, 54 inches is what I would recommend and then you're going to want it to be five inches tall. Go ahead and iron out all of your wrinkles, and then you're going to fold your fabric right sides together. Now, I don't have right sides because this fabric is exactly the same on the front as it is the back, um, but you're gonna wanna fold the faces of the fabric together if you're using a printed fabric. And then this was, <laughs> this was really tricky because again, I'm not very good at cutting straight lines. So just do the best you can, make sure your edges line up as best you can. And then I am lint rolling it because ew. You're gonna go ahead and pull your iron back out and give this a really good press to make sure that the edge is so nicely, crisply pressed down and you don't have to worry about it unfolding when you're working on the hemline. Now, of course, we have to hem these edges as well. So that center line that you just creased into your waistband, you're going to go ahead and unfold your fabric and fold over a three quarter inch hem line, just as we did before, but we will not be double folding this time. So this is just a single fold that you're gonna to want to be about three quarters of an inch, and then you will press it down with your iron. Now, if you guys can see here, mine was too small, so I did measure it just to confirm, and then I'm making it a little bit bigger of a fold and going back over it with my iron. And you will be doing this all the way down the 54 inch length before we get to the sides. Then you're gonna to wanna to repeat this on the top of your waistband as well, all the way across. Once you've done the 54 inch length, we're gonna go ahead and do those little five inch sides. You're just gonna fold that over about three quarters of an inch as well and press it down really good with your iron and then do the exact same thing on the opposite side. So part of the reason you needed to create such a really good center crease line on this fabric in the first place is because of what we're about to do next. So you're gonna take your waistband and open it up and then you're gonna place your skirt inside of the waistband. This is how we're going to be attaching it as well as hemming it. So you're gonna pin this in place and really a lot of this is just taking your time and making sure that you're satisfied with how this looks. The biggest thing to watch out for is that your uh, waistband lines up with itself. So you don't want any part of the waistband to be um, sticking down too far or not overlap correctly with itself on the ends. So as you can see here, I am using pins to make sure that I'm holding this in place and just kind of checking my work as I go. Again, this is not a, um, you know, race or anything, take your time with it so that it gets done right. After you have your skirt pinned to your waistband, then you're gonna go back over it with your iron just to make sure that the top of the waistband is nice and crisp and ready to be sewn in place when the time comes. The ironing is really key with this project is what I found. <laughs> and then I am continuing these steps along the ends of it as well because like I said, you wanna make sure that your waistband is lining up with itself nicely on the little tails that are gonna tie behind you. Now you're gonna head back to your sewing machine and with a pin in place, I am going to be sewing the short ends of the tails first. So that is where I'm starting with my hemline. I'm just gonna go ahead and start backstitch, go all the way down and backstitch. 
And just like we did before, we're treating this all as if it's one stitch. So I will insert my needle down, lift the foot, turn my apron tail, and then I am going to stitch the long way. So make sure that you are in a good placement. When you do this, you can see that I'm adjusting here just to make sure I'm in the right spot. And then I'm going to stitch all the way down, closing up that open part of the tail. I'm going to slow the clip back down a little bit just because I've gotten to the skirt portion of what I'm sewing. Um, so I'm going to roll my skirt up just to make sure that it's as out of my way as I possibly can while I'm sewing this. And then I am just making sure that everything's pinned the way I want it to be. I realized that my pins were going the same direction that I'm feeding the fabric, which always really annoys me when I'm sewing. So I am moving the pins to make sure that I'm more comfortable when sewing. And then I'm just going to continue this straight stitch all the way across the skirt. I still have this video in two times, just so you guys know, because it is still sped up, just so this video is not a billion years long, but I just want to reiterate that so that you guys understand how slow I really am going. And now that we're to the bottom or the end of the skirt and we're back on the tail, I'm just gonna continue again, straight stitching all the way to the bottom of this tail. And then we just have to finish the other short end. Don't forget to close up the side of this tail as well. So I'm just kind of going slowly here. I think I'm even cranking the hand wheel at one point instead of using the pedal. Um, and then I turn my fabric and finish off that final edge, back stitch, and then you can take it out of the machine. Next, we're gonna be moving on to making the pocket. Now, I don't have a pattern for you guys, but I am gonna show you how I made the pattern. <laughs> um, I basically just took some cardstock and made a rectangle that was bigger than my cell phone. So, and then I cut it out using a paper cutter so that my edges were straight. This is some excess fabric that I actually had left over from Daylin's Mary costume from her very first Halloween. Um, so this fabric's actually kind of like sentimental to me. Um, but because it was part of her Mary costume, I thought it was so perfect to add for the pocket instead of doing the exact same fabric. I liked the contrast. Um, now for the top of this pocket, you are going to want to kind of repeat the same steps you did with the hemline. You're going to want to fold over the edge and do it nice and neat, press it down with your iron and then fold it over once more and press it down with the iron. Now, as you can see here, I am using the pattern while I iron. If you use a thick cardstock, that is totally possible to do without any danger to yourself as long as you don't like leave the iron on top of it. Um, but I just felt like it helped give me a nice, really straight edge. Um, and then I'm constantly going back to the pocket and just confirming that it is the right sizing. I double folded over each edge. Um, just like we did with the original hemlines of the skirt. So this just helps the pocket be reinforced and gives it a nice um, stiff shape on the apron as opposed to being kind of floppy when you put your phone inside. Now, before I cut off the bottom, I just wanted to confirm one more time that this was big enough for my cell phone because I figured if Erica's putting anything in her pocket in the kitchen, it's probably her phone or maybe like a cooking spoon. <laughs> so I did want an overly tall pocket just because I felt like that made it made the most sense. Something else you're gonna to wanna to confirm is just by taking that little piece of paper that you made your pattern, lay it on top of the skirt just to see how you like how it falls on the skirt. Make sure that it's not too tall or too big. I also think it would be super cute if you did this around Valentine's Day to make the pockets little hearts or if it was Christmas time, even like little snowmen or something. Um, I just think that'd be super cute. If you guys want me to make another tutorial of the apron, maybe in a different style, let me know below because it was really fun to make and I didn't keep this one. <laughs> So as you see me doing right now, I am really just going over this with my iron repeatedly because I want to be sure that the edges are really crisp and clean before I take it over to my sewing machine to stitch. 
I did decide to pin all of this down because this fabric was giving me a little bit of trouble and kept kind of unfolding itself and getting crooked and things like that. So I don't know why this fabric in particular was so stubborn, but I just kind of messed around with it until I got it to do what I needed it to do. Um, part of my problem was the way that I was folding the fabric because just as we did with the skirt, you need to work uh, the sides first and then do the top and the bottom. If you try to do everything like in a circle, then it's not going to work. You need your uh, hemming lines to make sense. So start with the sides, pin those down, and then go ahead and do the top and bottom or the other way around. You can start with the top and bottom and then do the sides. They just kind of need to go in partners, if that makes sense. So now that it's all nice and ironed and pinned, I'm gonna take this over to my sewing machine. Um, I am going to be sewing all four sides to make sure that it is nice and hemmed and that the shape of this pocket can be retained. Um, as I get to the corner, I am removing the pin and then I'm going to leave my needle down, turn my pattern, or I'm sorry, turn my pocket and then continue sewing. If you're new to sewing, this is just like some advice. If you're ever sewing something where you need a continuous stitch, then just when you get to that corner, you just make sure that your needle is all the way down in the fabric, lift up the foot and then turn it. And then you can lower the foot back down and continue until you've gone all of the way around. Again, I highly suggest back stitching at the beginning and the end. Now I did wanna show you guys before I added the waistband, I did check the pocket that I created because I just wanted to make sure that I liked how it lined up on the skirt. I think you probably could attach the pocket before attaching the waistband, but for some reason this just made more sense in my head to attach the pocket last. I went ahead and pinned it in place and we're gonna take that over to the sewing machine now. You can see the waistband is attached at this point and I'm going to just be hemming the sides and the bottom of the fabric, not hemming, I'm sorry, attaching the pocket on the sides and the bottom. Obviously do not stitch across the top of your pocket unless you want it to be an unfunctional pocket. But what woman wants that? So again, start by back stitching, and then you're gonna work your way down the pocket, across the bottom, and back up the other side. Now I'm fancy and I do have one of those sewing mannequins, so I got to be able to show you guys what this looks like on it. Um, but the pocket is so great. It's super big and functional. The um, ties, I had a loose thread there. The ties on the back are very nice. They are even, I just didn't tie them even in any way, shape or form. Um, <laughs> but if you guys see here, you can make a really nice bow. I'm retying it because it was off center. See, look, that looks much better. Good job, Saria. But this is the finished product. Now we are on to our third and final project of this video. So I'm gonna be making a pocket tee. I thought that this is a really cute way to display your Disney love, show off some super cute fabric um, in a different way and you don't have to make an entire outfit. You can just add a little pocket onto a plain t-shirt. So because this is for Erica, I am going to be showcasing Winifred on this pocket because that is her personal favorite. Um, and I'm gonna start by using my template in order to hem my pocket. So I just cut a pretty big rectangle that I knew fit around the template that I made and then I am using my iron to double fold my edges. So this is maybe a little unnecessary. I chose to do it for this project, project but I have made other pocket tees before and only single folded the edge. Um, the only benefit I would say to double folding is that it is a little bit easier to sew it onto the t-shirt because it's so sturdy. But after doing the first edge, I am going to just trim off the excess because clearly I have way too much fabric. And then again, I will be double folding over the other side of the pocket template. Once you've done the sides, we're gonna move on to the bottom portion. And this is a little bit different just because there is an angle. So you're just gonna to need to fold it down and hold it while you iron it in order to allow it to 
really crease and get in the right positioning. I did not double fold the bottom. Um, I only did that on the sides. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pin this in place because this fold is making it a little tricky for the fabric to stay down. Now I'm gonna reinsert or replace my template, if you will, and go ahead and do the top. I can obviously see I have way too much fabric, so I'm snipping off the excess, and I will be double folding the top as well. Once you have everything pressed, I would suggest using clips or pins just to hold everything in place when you take it over to the sewing machine. Or if you're hand sewing, it'll help keep everything in place. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna stitch this top portion first. I'm gonna leave these pinned, and then when I sew it on the shirt, that will stitch the bottom part. I do think I'm gonna trim this just a teeny bit though. Again, this feels a little bit like cheating because I have a mannequin at home, but um, I've also done this on myself. I've put the t-shirt on myself and gone to the mirror and pinned the pocket in place. But you really do want to wear the shirt when you do this because how it looks when it's laid flat and how it looks when you're wearing it is completely different with the pocket. Um, so just make sure that you have the pocket placed where you'd like it and then go ahead and pin that in place. I do have another clip coming where I'm just gonna leave in the original audio because I felt like I explained it really well there. So I'm just gonna let past Saria explain this next part to you. So I went ahead and aligned my needle with my top stitch that just kind of finished off that seam and hemmed it. And now I'm going to just sew my way around the pocket. Obviously make sure that your shirt is open so you're not gonna like sew the shirt shut. And I'm using the edge of my foot as my seam allowance. Once I have that lined up and the foot lowered, I am going to stitch forward, back stitch a little bit, and then continue down the side. I do like to remove the pins as I sew. It's, I mean, some people like to sew right over them. I find that it messes up my machine when I do that, so. Um, then again, leaving the needle inserted, lowering the foot back down, and then continuing down that angle. Make sure that you are catching the hemline of the pocket. If you are too high above it, the pocket's gonna look really funky. Um, so you just want to make sure that you're lining this up properly, which is like I, why I liked using the bottom of the foot as the seam allowance edge. Plus, I can't see it with the shirt open if I try to use the lines on the plate of my machine. And then continuing back up the top, I will also backstitch when I get there. Something I will say is if you don't like this little flappiness of the pocket, you can stitch right along the edge. You can also do both, which I might go in and do right now. I'm gonna see how this looks on, and then if I don't like it, I am gonna do another stitch literally like as close along the edge as I can. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please let me know below which craft was your favorite, and do you guys have any other suggestions for me of things that I can do with fabric? Keep in mind, I don't really like taking on really large sewing projects. Just timeline wise, I don't tend to take those on. So if you have ideas for projects with fabric that are light sewing or no sewing, I will take them down below. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're looking for more Halloween inspired crafts, then please check out my playlists. I will try to remember to link them down below just so you guys can check those out. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.